Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a really nice equation with complex numbers. We have z plus ln z equals i and i is the imaginary unit whose square equals negative 1. Let's make that clear so it's not misunderstood. And we're going to be solving for z values. Let's see how we can tackle this problem and these kinds of problems. So whenever you see the z and the ln z together, you should almost always think about a special function, which is called Lambert's w function. I don't know if you heard about it, but Lambert's w function works as follows. Let's go ahead and do a quick intro. So Lambert's w function is basically takes an input and then turns it into an output like this. In other words, it's the inverse function for t e to the t, which is also called the product log, by the way. Lambert's W function is also called product log. So if you're going to enter something and move from alpha, which I usually do, then you can kind of enter it as product log parentheses and then whatever the expression you have. Make sense? So here's one thing though. This has multiple branches and depending on where you cut it, uh, you're going to get different solutions. And in some cases, you're going to get more than one solution, right? Because t e to the t is not one to one. If you graph it, you're going to see what I'm talking about, but let's get to the problem. So to solve this problem, we're going to be able to use this, but how can I get something like t e to the t? What's my t? Here's what we are going to do. Since we have an ln z and a plus sign, this is actually awesome. We can go ahead and do e to the power both sides. In other words, I'm trying to say if z equals w, then e to the power z equals e to the power w. Would you agree? Or should I write it with real numbers? Doesn't matter. If a is equal to b, then e to the a equals e to the b, right? Now, this may not always be correct for complex numbers, but that's a different story. Let's go ahead and see how we can use this. So we're going to go ahead and do e to the power z plus ln z equals e to the i. As if this made the problem easier because e to the i is probably more complex, okay, pun intended, than i, right? But that's still a complex number. We'll talk about it. So the plus sign allows us to separate this into a product. And as you should know, e to the ln z is the same as z, right? It's just another way of writing z, which is really cool because this gives us our t. What's our t? In this case, it happens to be z, because we get z e to the z equals e to the i. So the next thing to do is apply Lambert's W function and get a nice output, right? Obviously, only from the left-hand side, because the right-hand side is kind of crazy. How do you W that, right? But we're going to apply it anyways. Let's go ahead and put a little space here so I can fit my big W. I don't want to delete anything. So big W or W of this equals W of that. We talked about the definition earlier. So this is equivalent to Z. And then we get W of E to the I. So here is the million dollar question. What is E to the I? Well, if I was a real number, then we would have a sort of like an idea. Let's say what is E squared? It's E times E. What is E to the power one half? Square root of E. What is e to the power two thirds? Uh, cube root of e squared. Okay, those are easy ones. What is e to the power square root of two? That's kind of like a crazy thing, right? If you can approximate square root of two, like between this and that, then obviously when you do e to the power, it's gonna be e to the power this and e to the power that. But that's a very different story. Now, e to the i, you can't really do it, right? Because what is i? i squared is negative one, but how do you handle that? So let's talk about how we can do something like e to the power i. And Euler's formula comes to the rescue. All right? So remember, Euler's formula can be written as e to the power i theta equals cosine theta plus i times sine theta. This is just an amazing, the most amazing equation in my opinion. Just mind-blowing because it's Euler. Come on. Now, we do need e to the i. So what does this tell you, right? Basic Algebra will tell you that, okay, you need to replace theta with 1, right? But is theta measured in radians or degrees? That's a good question, right? I'm going to leave that open. But if you replace theta with 1, 
Then you get e to the i on the left hand side and on the right hand side you get cosine 1 plus i times sine 1. In other words, e to the i is just a complex number that can be written as a plus b i. So this is like a plus i b. Same thing, right? a plus b i. Now, so what can we do with this? Not much. I'll show you. We can kind of write our answer in a I don't know if it's simpler, but you know, we could probably write replace e to the i with cosine 1 plus i sine 1. By the way, theta can get infinitely many values, but when you write something like e to the i, do you think it's going to have a single value, or am I allowed to add multiples of 2 pi to this? Is that still going to be a solution? Something to think about. But anyways, so if you can use a calculator, plug this in, you're going to get the solution for z, again, as a complex number. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at some results from Wolfram Alpha. Again, you don't need to get defensive when I say Wolfram Alpha can't solve it. This time, it can give us a solution. So the numerical solution for z would look like this. So about roughly 0 0.49 plus 0.36i, which is a complex number, approximately, right? Obviously, there's a lot of rounding here. And then when I plug this in, this is the interesting part. This is my z, and this is, I'm sorry, including i. And this is my ln z, because well, from alpha, unfortunately, shows it as log. And the result is supposed to be i, but this is kind of close to i because think about it, this has a lot of zeros. So that's a very small number, and this is pretty close to i. So it's supposed to be i when you have used the exact value, but there's no exact value. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.